Herzlich willkommen zum Welterbetag. Mein Name ist Roland Tampe. Ich bin von Union Investment und wir sind mit dem Fonds Unimo Deutschland der Eigentümer dieses Objektes. Ich freue mich alle, Sie heute digital begrüßen zu können. Wir können leider keine Führung direkt vor Ort machen mit Ihnen zusammen, aber deswegen schwierige Zeiten erfordern neue Methoden haben wir uns entschlossen, eine digitale Führung für Sie zusammenzustellen heute. Unter der Leitung von Nicola Janocher, unserer bewährten Hamburger Stadtführerin. Und ich wünsche Ihnen viel Spaß dabei. So, here we are on a place where usually you can't get to, and that's the roof of the Chili House. Uh, from here you have an extraordinary outlook to the warehouse city just opposite, but you can also see the spires of Hamburg, and you have uh, a nice look uh, into the courtyards of uh, the Chili House, and that is what we are going to see now. Okay, here we are at the beginning of the Chili House, you could say. Behind me, you can see two completely different buildings. On, your, on the right-hand side, the dark red brick building, that's the Chili House, of course. We will get to that later on. On the left-hand side, there's some bright red brick building. Um, that is today, and it also was from the beginning, a police station. And if you just compare roughly the two surfaces, you can already recognize there's a cut, a clash, so to say. The bright red brick building, the police building, that was um, built 1907, beginning of the 20th century, by Albert Erbe. Albert Erbe, that's the name of the architect. He was um, very well known here in Hamburg. He built quite a lot of um, state buildings here, representative um, state buildings in town, and also this one. And that marked already a first tiny little cut, you could say. Because before the police station was built here, and the Chili House later on, this area looked completely different. Tiny little half-timbered houses were standing here, belonging to the so-called alleyway quarter, the Gängeviertel in German. Um, these half-timbered houses were for the poorer people of Hamburg, and there a huge cholera epidemic broke out in 1892, which also marks um, a change in the old part of Hamburg. And after the cholera epidemic, these half-timbered houses were slowly but surely torn down. And at the beginning, it was not clear what shall become of this area where we are here. So the city started with the police station. That was the first building here. And at that time, it was a kind of skyscraper, you could say, because these half-timbered houses were much lower. And it also gave the direction for the later coming Chili House. So this was the traditional style, which was very much in fashion, 19th century here in Hamburg. Chili House marks um, the step to the next uh, kind of construction kind, you could say, um, that was built in the 20s. So there's only 15 years difference between these two buildings. So on the area where the Chili House was built, about 69 of these tiny little half-timbered houses were standing, quite a lot. It gives you an idea how huge the area is. And second, what we can see here also pretty well, if you look behind me, it's going slightly down. Huh? It's going down to the Elbow River. And close to the Elbow River, you find marshy underground. That means humid underground. Going up here in front of me, that is the Geest, as we call it in northern Germany. And that means that are leftovers of the last ice age. And that means sandy underground. So the Chili House, uh, so to say, from the point of view from the underground, is um, a kind of contrast program. It's the humid area behind me, close to the river, and the sandy area. And that is exactly where the Chili House was built on, on the cut, so to say, of these two different undergrounds. So we had the beginnings of uh, the Chili House, what was here before, but uh, how did it start with the building? And important in this context is Mr. Henry Slowman, that is this guy here. We have a plate here that's uh, commemorating him, Henry Slowman. He stands from a family that uh, immigrated in the 17th century from England to Hamburg and opened here a shipping company, the Sloman Shipping Company, but Henry obviously did not stay in Hamburg. He went to South America, to Chile, and that is where he earned his money with. 
And uh, in a time which for Germany altogether was quite difficult, First World War was over, was lost, there was hyperinflation in Germany, um, global economy was also not the best, not culminated 1929 in the Black Friday. That was the time when Henry Sloman earned his money and had foreign currency with which he built this house here, the Chili House. We are here in one of the entrance halls of the Chili House. Um, you find turtles here, for example, as decoration, or lizards uh, at the walls. And um, the idea was, of course, to represent. Now, this was what the customer would see uh, or would have as the first uh, impression when he entered this building, visiting uh, a client, and he should have respect, of course. Because if you go upstairs into the floors, they are a bit simpler than the entrance halls. And in this particular one, we have these very nice seats here uh, with the blue tiles and so on. And I always imagine that the merchants, the traders were sitting here puffing their cigars when it was still allowed and just talking about the latest uh, development in economies and so on. The Chili House uh, as the whole Contour House fertile altogether was also hidden was also affected uh, during the Second World War by bombs, of course, but not as severe as the rest of Hamburg was. So here where I am standing, you can see it pretty well. If you have a closer look at the color of the clinker of the bricks, down there they are brighter and upwards they are darker. And that is where a bomb uh, hit the chili house, which you can recognize until today in the color of the bricks. Here we are, behind me. That is what made the Chili House so famous, the peak, so to say. And if you have a closer look, think about it. So is there something which comes to your mind of what it reminds you? I hope that you're thinking of a ship. That is at least uh, what here in Hamburg we think. It looks like a ship's pro. People from the USA might have another association. They think very often at the flat iron. Oh, another famous building in New York, um, that's also fine, but we think it looks like a ship. And what the building itself actually made famous was at the beginning a photography, this one here. And if you compare the photo with reality, reality shows us uh, the ship's pro is not as steep as it looks at the photo. So the photographer must have used one or the other trick to give this impression. But nevertheless, that was the beginning of the popularity of this building worldwide. And who had the idea? That was the architect, Grumpy Fritz, as I call him. Fritz Höger, that is his name of the architect. And I was looking really for a good looking photo, but I couldn't find any. So this is how he looked like. And what is maybe interesting is Fritz Höger actually wasn't an architect. He was a carpenter. His father owed a carpentry and that is where the son learned the profession. But Mr. Höger was always interested in architecture. And so he went to Hamburg, to one of the finest architectonical um, offices here and was learning and absorbing and everything he could about architecture and construction. And then he opened up his own office and uh, offered also so to build houses. And he also would have loved to become a member of the German Association of Architects. But they thought, well, Mr. Höger, you are not a studied architect. You didn't go to university as we did. So sorry, unfortunately, you can't become a member. So this self-made architect, you could say, Fritz Höger, he is the one who designed the world famous Chili House. There is one thing which I didn't mention up to now, and that is why is the Chili House named Chili? It has nothing to do with the spice, but actually with a country in South America, with Chili. And Mr. Slowman, who was the owner of the Chili House, who had the money to have it built, I said earlier that um, he spent his time in Chile and uh, he was earning his money there with saltpeter, potassium nitrate. Now Chile is a country very rich of natural resources and saltpeter was one of that. Saltpeter was used in the past as a fertilizer for example and later on it was discovered hey you can also um, destroy 
buildings with that. So it also works as an explosive. And Mr. Sloman exported the saltpeter from Chile to Europe via the port of Hamburg, where his family had this shipping company, for example. So that's why it's named the Chile House. And if you have a closer look at the ship's pro, you can find another resemblance to Chile. If you see the figure here, the bird, that's of course not an eagle. It's a condor. No condor, the important bird which you find uh, in South America. And if you have another even closer look, you can see engraved there the year when the Chile House was built. That was between 1922 and 1924. We are here in the third entrance of the Chile House and as you can see they all look different. Huh? None entrance is like uh, the other one. And what we can see here pretty well is a leftover of the past. Here you see the former tenants of the Chile house. It's alphabetical, here we have A to K, on the other side it's L to Z, and um, it's really handwork. Hmm? So the name of the company was uh, painted by hand and it was also wiped out and replaced by another name. That is how it worked in the past. What you can also see in the past, obviously, much more companies were to be found here than today, because today we have the modern version of the names of the tenants here. It's less and it's um, plexiglass, which is very easily to be replaced if somebody moves in or out. And what you can also see here is that uh, today a company is hiring one floor, for example, or maybe even two, while in the past there were really a lot of tiny little uh, entrepreneurs to be found here and uh, that has to do with the way the building had been built which was very modern at that time. It was a kind of skeleton building which uh, allows to adapt the size of the office to the necessities of the company. Today very normal, 20s of the 20th century, very modern as well as uh, the elevator. The latest technology at that time was the so-called Paternoster. That's an eternally going round elevator which is open, it has no doors and you just jump in the cabin and the floor where you want to leave, you jump out again, which is also kind of dangerous. That's why they are forbidden today. And when the Chili House had been modernized, it, the Paternoster was replaced with a modern elevator.